Earlier, when I made the video on diode testing, I realized uh, after I made it that I hadn't included the testing of the inverse voltage rating of a diode, sometimes called PIV for peak inverse voltage. I'll show you that on a data sheet here in a second. But what I am doing right now is I have the BM500A the mega meter connected to a diode with a 10 meg current limiting resistor. I'll show all that in a little bit. It's set to a thousand volts and I'm going to press the test button. And you may notice that we get uh, about 270 uh, mega ohms indicating that this diode is breaking down in the reverse direction at a thousand volts. Now I have reversed the polarity and we'll test the uh, again. Now understand this means that we are now testing the diode in its forward direction and so it should read the value of the limiting resistor which is a 22 meg uh, resistor. And we get about 22 or 23 meg, which is what the uh, what the limiting the current limiting resistor is. So let's talk a little bit about this, and then we'll come back and we'll test another diode at the other end of this string, and then we'll test that diode that you have see up there at the top. The diode that I'm using, that string of diodes, uh, they are all 1N 4001s. This is a data sheet from ON Semiconductor for the whole line of 4000 series. They run from 4001 to 4007. And the major difference between them is in the peak inverse voltage. I'll zoom in in a second and show you some of that, but this is the back or the second page of that data sheet. And you may notice that here you see it says peak repetitive reverse voltage and then non-repetitive peak reverse voltage. In this case they're calling it reverse voltage instead of inverse voltage, but basically uh, it's the same thing. It's how much this diode will withstand voltage-wise in the reverse direction. So let's take a look at some of these diodes. It says that the 4001 should be able to withstand 50 volts, whether it's repetitive or non-repetitive, and then as you go up you see that the 4007, for example, will, will withstand a thousand volts. So it's not surprising that the diode we're testing at a thousand volts is breaking down. But now let's take a look at another diode in that same string measured in the, both the forward and reverse direction. Before I go to the diode on the other end, let's just redo this one. This is the forward, 22, ohm, 22 mega ohms, and now on camera I'm going to reverse these so that you'll see that there's no, no Cecil B. DeMille uh, trick photography here. Reverse. 250 megs, let's call it. Now, let's simply move to the diode at the other end of this string, still in the original seal, and you see here on the side it says 1N4001. I don't know if you can read that or not. We're now going to press that and you notice that the meter reads 1, which means overrange. In other words, uh, very, very high resistance. And yet this is in the reverse direction. Well, you say, okay, maybe that diode is just open. 
So let's reverse the leads and read it in the forward direction. And you see we get the 22, 23 mega ohm of the limiting resistor. So, so what does that tell us? Well, what it tells us is that the data sheet tells us what the manufacturer will guarantee the diode to, not what it might necessarily do. And so even though this is uh, a string of 1N4001s one in the original packaging, and I haven't tricked up anything here, I didn't select these, what I did is I went through, uh, I have several strings of these, and I went through until I found one that broke down in the reverse direction. And then I tested uh, another one in the same package in the forward direction and reverse direction just to make sure that both diodes are good, they both meet spec. One of them breaks down at a thousand volts and the other one doesn't. So how in the world did we get a 4001 diode that performs like a 4007, which you may recall has a thousand volts of uh, breakdown, uh, will withstand a thousand volts? Well, the difference is in the, in the processing. Impurities in semiconductor processing can change the characteristics of the semiconductor and the manufacturer has to account for that when they provide their specifications. In other words, a spec sheet like the one for this diode only provides what you might say is the minimum. In other words, the manufacturer guarantees these numbers, but it doesn't mean that they will actually break down at that voltage. They may, like this one diode, they may go 10, 20 times higher in breakdown voltage, or they may break down at just a little over this. It depends on the process and the impurities in the semiconductor. So this is an illustration of why you might want to test the PIV of the diodes you're using. You might have a bad diode, or you might want to select diodes for if their inverse voltage capability. Okay, now let's take a look at a completely different diode. So here we have a big fat diode. I'll show you the data sheet in a little bit being tested in the forward direction and we get the 22 to 23 mega ohm of uh, resistance that we expect. That's the current limiting resistor. Now let's reverse the leads. And we're now testing in the reverse or inverse position. And you notice that this shows 28.9. So in other words, in the forward direction, it was 22, 23 mega ohm. And in the reverse direction, it's only about 7 mega ohm higher. So this diode is breaking down quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's allowing a lot more reverse current than the first one. What is this diode? Well, this is a 6A01 diode and you may notice that it is rated at 50 volts but only 35 volts of RMS breakdown which is the same as the 4001. So why is this one conducting a lot more current? It's because the silicon area in this uh, diode is much larger it's done that way because you may or may not have noticed that this is a very high current diode. It's intended to carry, let's see, what do they rate it at? Uh, six amps. So the 
uh, it's a much more robust diode in the forward direction. But, once again, nothing in life is free. In order to get the uh, increased uh, forward conduction, you need to increase the silicon area. Well, as you increase the silicon area, the reverse voltage goes down. And so, this illustrates why you might want to test the inverse voltage ratings of diodes that you're putting, say, in a power supply. Now, let's take a look at the circuit we're using and talk about an alternative that you might also want to try. I'm not going to do it here. Uh, and then close this video. So here is the circuit that we're using. This is the meg ohm meter. Notice there's a 22 meg current limiting resistor here, and then the diode is connected here. So when we have it connected in the reverse direction, the, uh, the diode will break down, and when it breaks down, current will flow through the 22 meg resistor and be indicated on the meter. In the forward direction, of course, this is, uh, compared to the 22 meg ohm, this is essentially a short. So we only read the 22 meg ohm. Now, of course, you'll want to put the diode in one direction to make sure it's a good diode, and then reverse it to test the inverse voltage. So, let's take a look at why we need to be careful about keeping that current limiting resistor. And once again, we're going to look at the data sheet for the uh, 4000 series. Notice that down here we have a maximum reverse current and Sliding over to the left, we see that it says typically it's only 0.05 microamperes. And so we set the resistor so that we will never exceed 0.05 microamperes through this diode. If we did, the mere testing might destroy the diode. That is, if we exceed the uh, the maximum reverse current. So that's the reason why we can't just use the meg ohm meter in reverse. We have to put a current limiting resistor in. And I use 22 meg. The, uh, you could of course use a higher value, but you don't want to use a value much lower or else you'll find out that all your diodes are bad. They were good before you tested them, but they're bad now because you exceeded the reverse uh, current. So, I hope this has added to your knowledge of diode testing. It's intended to be a supplement to the earlier video on diode testing. And I, uh, even though I made that a, a few weeks ago, I hope that if you haven't watched that video, you'll go back and look at the diode testing video as well. Understand, the reverse breakdown occurs in all diodes. The difference between one of these diodes is you're in the normal operation, it does not break down in reverse. That contrasts with a zener, which is specifically designed to break down at a controlled reverse voltage and to do it over and over again for hours or days or weeks without failing, as long as you keep the current within reasonable limits. So once again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and have a nice day.